So on this section of the um, the spindle, so this is the very front end of the spindle, they've got these two slots in, and these were put in for the dogs on the face mill that came with it. These edges here are absolutely razor sharp, and if you think about it, this is where your hands go in all the time, you know, loading in drill chucks or you know collet chucks or whatever. There's a couple of times I've caught myself on these. I've not managed to slice open my skin yet, but very very easy to do. So I don't think I'm going to be using these slots. Certainly not with the cutter that came with it. Um, but what I am going to do is just take a, a very tiny. Uh, grinding point to this where I can and just take the, the worst of the sharp edges off just to save my hands more than anything. And uh, the old Woolworths Dremel that's uh, earned its money um, finally after about 25 years of ownership um, it's had a good use um, on this strip down so we're just going to use that with a very fine grit grinding point in and just give those a quick deburr. What we would do if we got it switched on. There we go, you get the idea, much better. Right guys, we've done a bit more clean up. So um, we've cleaned up the pinion, um, the pinion shaft. So this was absolutely covered in paint across its whole length really. Um, so that's all been cleaned up, ready for the refit. Um, so that's done. And what I'm just going to do now is make some spacers. Um, to replace the circlips that have been used to space the oil seals on the gear selector shaft. Um, so that's what we're going to do next. Um, so what I've, gonna, what I've done is I've measured these spaces up. So I've measured up the thickness of three of these circlips together. And I've also measured um, the inside diameter of the seal at the back and obviously the diameter of the shaft and I've just made a, a quick drawing which I'll just show you now on the whiteboard just bear with me somewhere there it is so dead simple Ooh, wrong way so 18mm OD 12mm bore and 3mm thick so what I've got for that is Let's come back to the bench. I've looked out a bit of steel. Somewhere, <laughs> get it in shot. Um, anyway, I failed at doing that. It's here. So this is 20 mil diameter. Don't know what it is. Unknown name. Um, it's it's rusty, so it's you know it's carbon steel of some description. But that'll be fine for making those spaces 
um, they're going to be the oil side of the seal so they're going to be bathed in oil so we'll move to the lathe now we'll get that set up and we'll just knock a couple of those spaces off for those two shafts so we're here at the lathe I'm just going to set this bit of 20mm bar up in the chuck First job will be just to face off the um, face off the end as usual when we're turning anything. What speed are we on? Uh, Twelve hundred. Yeah, that'll be all right. Team, blow the mill off. there hopefully 18.01 that's good enough what we'll do now is stick the hole in the middle straight in with a 12 mil drill. I'm not putting a pilot drill in. Let's see how that goes. What's this drill look like? Mm. Not the best grind, we'll give it a go. What we do is there. Touching up a bit really that. down because we've got we've not got a pilot drill in there.
next week. It's time to sink the front one, front hole. slide is still set accurately perpendicular to the lathe axis from the last job that I did. I'm going to use the compound slide again just to measure these, uh, these spaces off. And we've got a five mil thickness for the tool, and then we want three millimeters. One, two, two and a half, three. That's the first one. first one
two spacers, that one's hot, um, ready to go. I've just got to deburr the back end of those, which I'll just do with the um, uh, the Noga copy tool that I've got. But that's two, three more spacers made, dead quick, dead easy. Um, and I'm sure they're going to be far better than three circlips sat back to back. So um, I'll bring you back at the next bit, whatever that may be, as part of the cleanup. Just thought I'd have to clean the the um, the brake edge up now on that ball. Just thought I'd come back and show you. So Vernier's on zero there. So we're looking for an 18 mil OD. We've got 18 1803, a 12 mil ID, and that is just a drilled hole. So we're 1205, and we're three mil width. And a 3.01 so you know it's, it's not difficult to make stuff like that dead quick dead easy there's really really no excuse for putting circlips on as spaces so as I said we'll move on and I'll bring you back whatever the next part of the cleanup is okay we're going to attack uh, this piece now on the handle so this taper here that's a machine taper fits inside the um, the fine feed unit and you'll see I've already cleaned the, the mating taper out so that's all cleaned out now uh, ready to go obviously the two tapers bite together in here to engage the the fine feed so I'm just going to clean that obviously having paint all over it is not ideal it, it, it just means that it won't evenly locate in there so we're just going to clean all of that off clean all this up um, and it's just going to be scraper and scotch bright or something like that just to get the get the worst off so um, we'll just start with a with a rag and we'll just get all this this is you know as as I stripped it so it's covered in horrible grease and uh, even that's all gritty it's just the way it's been assembled with you know the cleanliness and or lack of cleanliness during the assembly so we'll get the worst of that grease off there Then we can start attacking the uh, the paint. Find something to get it off with. I've got some a bit of embry there. Just try. It's very smooth embry that it's been used quite a bit. I'm just going to see whether that's going to touch it. Yeah, that's fetching it off. Look. So you get the idea, I'll work my way around there and uh, we'll get all that paint off and give that a good clean up and uh, I'll bring you back when I've done, show you the finished thing and then we'll move on to the next, whatever the next part of the clean up is. There we go guys, that's that all cleaned up now, now light rub with some emery, a bit of scotch bright around it and I'm sure that will be a much better fit in that uh, in the fine feed adjuster um, when that locates. I've also deburred the keyway which wasn't deburred so that was all sharp so that's been deburred and just basically cleaned the bore out where it registers on the end of the on the end of the pinion shaft so that's all ready for reassembly. Um, I'll bring you back when we're on with the next bit of the um, the cleanup. Alright guys I've made a start on the um, the, the sort of head casting itself so what I've done is I've cleaned all of the top face up got rid of all the silicon that was on there basically I've just used a Stanley knife laid flat Stanley knife blade laid flat to, to get the the sort of raised silicon off and then I've just pinned around it with some scotch bright um, to get the 
sort of the lower down stuff, the thin level that was on there. So that's all all clean and ready to go. So I've just, for the first time, other than to remove the innards, I've just stuck my hand inside the casting just to kind of see what I'm dealing with really in terms of clean up. And I thought, hmm, that back wall just looks a little bit, you know, what I can see down there. I thought, is that just casting showing through there, through the paint or... So I just kind of stuck my finger in, and I don't know if you can hear that, but it's absolutely, and that's just all sand. It's that's just casting sand, and it's yeah, it's just full of it. Look, so what I thought was going to be a fairly simple clean up has now turned into a little bit more of a complicated clean up because. That's going to be no use at all to anything, having all that in there. So all of that needs to come out. So um, considering how best to do that, I think I'm going to use something like WD-40 and a paintbrush to start with. And I'm just going to start at the top and work down and scrub all of the walls as I go and get as far down as I can and then Hopefully at that point all of the damage and muck will be right in the very bottom and I've just got the very bottom face to clean out and the, the bearing journals. So uh, so that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to doing all of that. Um, I won't film that obviously for obvious reasons. Um, but I'll bring you back when I've done either some of it or all of it and show you, uh, show you the difference. Alright guys we're back. Um, I've got to admit that wasn't the most fun of jobs. Um, Anyway, we've uh, we've done that now, so we've cleaned it out, sort of as good as it's going to get. We'll do the we'll do the dirty thumb test again on this back wall here. This is where it was at its worst, and that's all nice and clean now. So I'll just try and tip you up with the camera. Just bear with me. I'm doing this with the camera on the tripod as well, so there might be some clattering and banging. Just bear with me a minute. So there you can see you now that's that's as clean as I'm going to get that without taking the you know the casting right off and and going to serious levels of uh, clean up which I'm not going to do. So that's as good as it's going to get. There's nothing loose in there now. There's no there's no grit that I can feel. There's no you know sand there's no paint that loose paint or swarf or you know grit so I think that's gonna have to be good enough we'll call that done um, what I've used just bear with me while I put the tripod back on the floor there we go what I've used as I suggested really good old WD-40 and one of these paint brushes not this one covered in swarf but one of these I basically just drenched the whole thing inside, scrubbed all the walls really, really hard with this with a with a brush, and then another layer of this on top to rinse it all down. I left the drain plug open at the bottom, so all the all the stuff's fallen into the little blue pot, and then I wiped down with a rag inside, and then another coating of this, and a clean brush, and I've been all over it again. Another wipe down with a rag and I think that's we're going to call that done. So this stuff is fantastic for cleaning WD-40. It's got a million different uses but cleaning is probably one of its biggest uh, benefits in a, in a workshop. It cleans everything and it does a really good job. So that's WD-40. Um, what I'm going to do now just for fun, let's bear with me a minute. Well, you can see my little waste oil container there anyway. So I'm just going to take the the blue pot. So this, what this had in it was a little bit of clear oil, the last of the oil that drained out. And I don't know if you can see the colour of that in there now, but that is pretty ugly. Um, and I'm just going to drain this carefully into here. And I want to see what's at the bottom of it because this pot was, I mean, that is pretty dirty that, 
but this pot was clean when I put it down. Whoa. We're getting to it now. I'll not drain anymore because it will go into the oil. I don't know if the camera will pick this up and I'm, I'm probably liable to spill it all over the place but that is full of tiny tiny particles of metal in all mixed in with that oil. Let me just tip a bit more in. I mean there's lots of it going in in the oil now. You can see all that on the bottom. That's what I could feel at the bottom of the thing. It's just, it's just, it's basically lapping paste, is what that is. That's, uh, yeah, the less said about that, the better. I think that's going to find itself a far better home in the waste oil container than it is in there. So I'm happy with that now. That's clean. I'm just going to cover that up now with a paper towel just to stop any nasties getting in there for the next couple of days while I'm busy doing various other bits of work that I've got to do um, in the shop before we start reassembling um, reassembling the head. So I'll bring you back when we're doing the next. I think the next job I'm going to do is attack the the lid, you know, the underside of the lid casting. We'll get that cleaned up and then I'll probably just loosely sit that on top as a as a lid. And then they'll both be kept clean until the point that then I'm ready to start refitting bearings and shafts and, and rebuilding. 